Hi everyone, David here from davidmayaudio.com and in this video I'll be going over what the difference is between a sound cue and a WAV file in the Unreal game engine. So this was actually a question I got from uh, somebody who watched one of my videos and uh, yeah, so let's just jump right in and we'll kind of discuss the difference and we'll give an example as well as, as um, how they can be used. So uh, let's switch over here. So this is the Unreal Engine, Unreal uh, Engine uh, 4. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop some sound files that I have here. So I'm just going to create a new uh, folder. We'll call it uh, sound files for now. Oops, no spaces. I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to drag and drop all my sound files in here. And this is what it looks like. And these are all wave files. So they're all referencing, there's just a recording of that I've made of different sounds. So. Right, just like that. So uh, inside of here, I can double click on these. Then there's a whole bunch of different settings like compression, the quality, the sample rate that I can uh, change. Um, you know, streaming, the sound, is it looping? Yes or no? Um, where is it going out to? I think this is what this is. Uh, yeah, just a whole bunch of uh, these settings that I can play with here. Um, yeah, so that's what this is doing here. So inside of here though, what, what I will then do is uh, create a queue. So if you just select them all, control A, right click on them and create queue, it'll create a queue. Now within Unreal Engine, this is what a queue looks like and it references a sound, a sound file. So this is, like I said before, we have our sound waves over here. These are my sound waves. And now I created sound cues, which are these uh, lighter blue uh, colors with the speakers. And these are reference sound waves, sound files. So if I look here at this first one, so this one is called uh, base layer one, and this sound cue is also called the same thing. It's base layer one, and if I double click on it, you can see my sound wave, the wave player here, base layer one, and you can see that it's connected to an output. So this is what a cue is. It's just referencing this one sound. Now, the reason that cues are powerful is because you can reference multiple sounds inside of one cue. So let's see what that might be like. So I'm just going to create another uh, cue here. I'm just gonna create a new sound cue. I'm just gonna call it uh, sound effects 02 because I already have 01 here. So this is gonna be sound effects 02. Oops. So I'm just gonna save it and open it. I'm gonna minimize the window. As you can see here, there's no references to any sound in this, um, in this window. That means this sound cue, if I press play, there's nothing. There's nothing because there's no sound. There's no, no, there's no recordings, no, nothing associated with it. There's no, nothing going to the output that will play in the sound. So, uh, so I'm just gonna open it and then I'm gonna minimize, not minimize it, I'm gonna make it a bit smaller here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my sound files here. I'm just gonna choose the sound waves. So all the wave files, control all, and I'm just gonna drag and drop them right into my sound queue. So I'm just gonna grab them all here and I'm gonna move them a bit closer to my output. Great, so now that they're here, I can just go like this. And what you'll notice is I actually group these into uh, different categories, to different groups. So I have my base layers here. So I'm just gonna put these up a little bit here. I have uh, body layers. So these ones are all the body of the sound. And down here I have shimmer, so a shimmer layer. So I'm just gonna move these down so they're all separated. So now we can see we have four different groups. And you'll see why this uh, cues, sound cues are powerful in just a second here. So what I'm gonna do is instead of outputting them all into the output of this cue, which I could do, and if I did that, all it would do is it would play all of these sounds at once uh, whenever this cue is played or referenced in the game. But what I'm gonna do instead something else, which is where you'll see why sound cues are, are quite powerful, is the, that you can add other nodes which processes the sound differently. So here at this node, I can go like this, Oop. Uh, add another input. So now for this node is called a random node. So what it's gonna do is randomly pick one of these three sounds that are associated or linked to it. So it's just gonna pick one, and then I can output that to the, uh, actually I need a mixer before I do that, so let me just add a mixer. So put that out to the mixer. And now the mixer is gonna go out to the output. So now whenever I play my sound cue, it's just gonna pick, as you can see uh, from the orange uh, bar here, just picking one sound from these every time. From that group, it's just gonna pick one. And now I, hopefully you'll see why this is getting powerful because now I can do that which, with each of these groups and now I can build out uh, really complex sounds just from, by using these sound cues. So I'm just gonna go through this really quick. I'll probably fast forward it and then I'll see you guys when it's all done. All right, so as you can see now, I've layered all these 
to four different groups, which are going to make up my complete sound effect. So and for each of these groups, it's going through a random node, which means it's going to pick a random one of these sounds from each group. So just one from this group, one from this second group, one from this third group, one from this fourth group. And it's going to output them all to the mixer, which is going to then go out to the main speakers. So let's hear what this sounds like. So hopefully you can see why this is powerful now, because using this method of doing sound design, um, whenever we have sound effects that we want to hear that we don't want to be super repetitive for the listener, you can group them into groups like this. And then whenever, and then you just reference them to a sound cue. And then every time that sound cue is played, it's always going to be different. It's always going to be slightly different, slightly uh, have slightly different variation, which is going to keep the interest of the listener. It's going to keep the game more interesting. So, you know, uh, times where you might want to use this, there's, for example, like gunshots. You never want a gunshot to sound the exact same, right? So you'll, you can do that for this. Um, you can do that for footsteps. You can do it for, you know, almost all sound design that you want to use. And again, like this is just a simple way of building it out, but you can, again, add more stuff. So if I have here like a modulator, what I could do is add a modulator to each of these, um, each of these uh, random nodes here. And now what it's going to do, is going to make the sound even more complex and more uh, randomized because now I can randomize the pitch of, of each of these, of whatever sound is picked from here. It's going to go to this node and then it's going to randomize the pitch and the volume and then go out to the output. So then I can randomize the pitch and the volume from each of these four layers as it goes out to the output. So again, you're randomizing not only the the, the different layers, then you're randomizing the pitch and the volume from each of those layers as well. So you're creating these complex sounds that are always interesting, right? So this is when you would want to use uh, you know, game cues. And that's why game cues, sound cues are really powerful because, um, yeah, as you reference them inside the game, they'll never be the same, um, which is something you want for uh, sound design. Anyways, so this is the, uh, the difference between, you know, sound uh, uh, waveforms and sound cues inside of Unreal. Uh, waveforms, you're, you, know, you just have your regular uh, sound. So this, for example, is just some music. It's just a recording. You might not, you wouldn't, you wouldn't use it inside of a sound cue the way that I just showed with the sound effects, like in this complex uh, sequence. Um, you still could, but you wouldn't build it out in the same kind of randomness. Um, but yeah, so, and then of course, cues are referencing multiple sound files. So hopefully that clears up a bit of, of what sound cues are for, how they are used and how they are powerful and what they can be used for and what sound waves are and how you can use them as well inside of Unreal. So anyways, I hope that was useful. I hope you guys found that valuable. If you guys have any questions or if I missed anything, please let me know. Uh, leave it in the comments, let everyone know. And um, yeah, how do you guys use sound waves, sound cues inside of Unreal? And uh, I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it, found it useful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.